Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Center for States video series on the essential functions for monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings. This series is produced by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the Children's Bureau. The Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief is intended to help child welfare agency leaders, managers, and stakeholders take a structured approach to plan for and execute strategies to monitor and evaluate implementation efforts and interventions, strategies to collect and analyze data for a variety of evaluation types, and then use data to make decisions and plan for sustainability of programs where feasible. It does this by providing step-by-step -step guidance to strategize and develop a plan for evaluation, collect and analyze data and consider fidelity and costs, and then use results to make decisions about ongoing efforts and sustainability. The Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief is broken down into four parts and 11 essential functions or tasks. It's important to remember that while the steps are presented in a linear way, in practice, often these steps will overlap and be revisited as teams continue to monitor, evaluate, and apply their findings over time. Part one is setting the stage for monitoring and evaluation. And it includes considering the circumstances and needs of the agency, which is the topic of this module, developing a logic model, identifying questions, and identifying the data measures, sources, and collection methods that will answer them, and then developing an evaluation plan. Part two is collect and analyze data, and it includes strategies to put the evaluation plan into place by collecting and analyzing the data outlined and then two special featured topics that are a version of data collection and analysis. They are examining fidelity and analyzing costs. Part three outlines how to use the data collected to make decisions and adjustments with two functions on sharing findings and recommendations and then making decisions to further spread, adjust, or discontinue. And part four is on sustainability planning and how teams should refine and implement a plan to sustain interventions when this is the decision of the team and stakeholder groups. Let's get started. As teams prepare for monitoring and evaluation, they should determine the scope of their monitoring or evaluation efforts. Consider where they are in the change and implementation process and decide on the approaches that will best meet their needs. So why do teams need to consider the circumstances and needs of the agency? To develop a shared understanding of the team's objectives for monitoring and evaluation methods and the benefits of different methods. To decide on an overall evaluation approach and scope for monitoring and evaluation efforts. And to consider agency readiness and the team's capacity to guide the monitoring and evaluation process when developing plans. How do teams consider the circumstances and needs of the agency? To inform change in implementation efforts, teams are encouraged to develop plans and processes as appropriate for the interrelated and overlapping approaches of monitoring, fidelity assessments, formative evaluation, and summative evaluation. While each approach can contribute important information to the agency, each also has trade-offs in terms of the resources required and needs may change over time. In defining the purpose, scope, and direction of monitoring and evaluation efforts, teams will need to take into account the following considerations the evidence base of the intervention, and degree of adaptation or new design. For example, a newly designed intervention may require more in-depth formative evaluation than a well-established evidence-based practice. Where the team is in the change and implementation process. What stakeholders want to know about the intervention. Funding and administrative requirements. Available timeframes and pressures, for example, is there urgency due to a new law's mandate? Available resources and capacity for data collection and analysis, and agency staff, 
and participant experience with as well as attitudes towards evaluation. Some circumstances may limit agency ability to conduct rigorous fidelity assessments, formative evaluations, or summative evaluations. When resources or time are limited, teams may find ways to narrow the scope of monitoring and evaluation activities. For example, focusing on one or a few core components rather than the full intervention. In addition, teams may consider whether they can, at a minimum, measure short-term and intermediate outcomes, even when they cannot fully assess the long-term impact. Teams should also consider program evaluability, which explores whether evaluation is feasible and likely to provide useful information. This can support efficiency with limited evaluation funding. Key aspects of evaluability are whether the intervention has realistic objectives and is defined well enough to be implemented with fidelity. And when preparing, teams should think about evaluation capacity. Can they realistically conduct the evaluation and then use the information to continue to learn from their evaluation processes? This may involve building individual and team motivation and skills, as well as addressing factors like culture and climate for evaluation. Strategies to address evaluation capacity may involve one or more of the following. Adding additional members to the implementation team who have data and evaluation expertise. Partnering with external evaluators or evaluation technical assistance providers. Identifying evaluation champions. Offering training and coaching to build evaluation knowledge and skills among team members. Introducing tools and protocols to guide evaluation efforts and easy to use data systems. And fostering a culture that embraces using data to learn and make improvements. Teams should consider some key questions as a team as they set the stage for monitoring and evaluation efforts by considering the circumstances and needs of the agency. How can your intervention benefit from each of these activities? Regular monitoring, fidelity assessment, formative evaluation, or summative evaluation. What do funders or administrators require in terms of monitoring, evaluation, and reporting? Is the agency culture supportive of data-informed decision-making? What questions do you want to be able to answer? What are your monitoring and evaluation objectives? And what is your overall proposed approach to meet those objectives? What monitoring and evaluation capacity does your agency have? How can it be further developed if needed? Let's take a moment to check in on what you've learned about considering the circumstances and needs of the agency. Why do teams consider the circumstances and needs of the agency? To develop a shared understanding of the objectives and benefits to different evaluation methods, decide upon an overall evaluation approach and scope and determine agency readiness and the capacity of the agency to guide the monitoring and evaluation process. How do teams consider the circumstances and needs of the agency? Teams should consider the circumstances, select their approaches, and identify the scope of efforts, and then consider evaluability and agency capacity to evaluate. What can help teams consider the circumstances and needs of the agency? By considering if the intervention can benefit from different approaches, looking at agency culture for data and the needs of funders and administration, thinking about the questions the team wants to answer and how this informs their decisions, and the capacity or potential capacity for completing the effort. Now take this a step further by reviewing the reflection questions for consider the circumstances and needs of the agency in your monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings workbook to connect what you've learned to your own experience. Up next is develop a logic model, the third module in this series, and the second essential function in the setting the stage for monitoring evaluation part.
This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract HHS P233201400033 c The content of this video does not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.